today's topic will be sovereignty, our status from the beginning of our country till now. I think this is the untold story and this is my basic, my love here. Anyway, we have a picture of King George up here and he is the person who was the king or sovereign at the time the revolution started. So because he was king, everyone was his subject. If you were his subject, then you had to obey him. We have a revolutionary war and the colonists didn't feel that King George was listening to their needs and they weren't being represented in Parliament. The Declaration of Independence outlines the grievances that were stated to King George. They didn't like paying the taxes they were paying and they started issuing their own form of money, colonial script, which was paper money. Ben Franklin made the statement, the colonists would have gladly borne the little tax on tea and other matters had it not been that England took away from the colonies their money, which created unemployment and dissatisfaction. The inability of the colonists to get power to issue their own money permanently out of the hands of King George III and the international bankers was the prime reason for the Revolutionary War." Quote. So it wasn't about not getting representation, as we have been led to believe, or a, tea, a, a tax on tea, but it was about the ability to print our own money. The king and his troops were sent packing and the treaty was signed about 1783. The union was formed and the constitution was signed in 1787 and they gave us a bill of rights, the first ten amendments. We are human beings and as such have inalienable rights. Think of where our rights come from. Our rights come from God. We're men and as men, I don't care where on the planet you live, your rights come from God, your creator. You were created to be a man or a woman. Think of a bird. Can a bird leader tell another bird not to fly over your house? Does the dog pack leader demand that those that follow him quit acting like dogs or to bring food and lay it at his feet? Why should a man demand anybody obey him? Soon after, the court decisions declare we the people who did establish and ordain the government, in other words, the people created the government, were individually sovereign. Sovereign means we have no superior authority above us. The only law, true law, is the golden rule. Quote, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is repeated in almost the exact same form in eight different religions around the world. Okay, here we have... These are court sites. It is the public policy of this state and public agencies exist to aid in the conduct of the people's business. The people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. Quote, California Government Code, Section 11120. And number four, at the revolution, the sovereignty devolved on the people and they are truly the sovereigns of the country, but they are sovereigns without subjects, with none to govern but themselves. Quote, Chisholm versus Georgia, U.S. 2 Doll 419. That's a U.S. Supreme Court decision in 1793. And then five, the very meaning of sovereignty is that the decree of the sovereign makes law. American Banana Company versus United Fruit Company, 29 SCT 511. Another Supreme Court decision, 213 U.S. 347. Quote, number six, the people of this state, as the successors of its former sovereign, that would be King George, are entitled to all the rights which formerly belonged to the king by his prerogative. Quote, Lansing versus Smith, 419, New York, 1829. So as we see, we are sovereign, or at least if we claim it, we are. So we... The, the status of the people are, who created the constitutions of the United States and the several states is one of being sovereign, which means that everyone is equal under the law and that the law applies to everyone and can't be changed by a majority as it can be in a democracy. Each has property rights and their neighbors can't take their house just because they feel like it. 
if 51% of your neighbors decided that that they liked your house for a clubhouse, they could take it in a democracy. But we don't live in a democracy. We live in a republic where I don't care if 90% of the people want to take your house. The law says you have the right to property and property can't be taken from you. Time marches on and in 1812 we have another war with England. England. In 1860 things start to change radically when the southern states walk out of Congress on March 27, 1861. The quorum to conduct business under the Constitution was lost. The only votes Congress could lawfully take under parliamentary law were those to set the time to reconvene, take a vote to get a quorum, and vote to adjourn and set a date, time, and place to reconvene at a later time. Instead, Congress abandoned the House and Senate without setting a date to reconvene. Under the parliamentary law for Congress, when this happened, Congress became sine dia without day. Thus the Congress became no longer lawful and in session and no power to declare war existed. Congress did not reconvene until days later when it was reconvened under the military authority of the Commander-in-Chief by executive order and sat unlawfully under the pleasure of Abraham Lincoln. To this very day, Congress still exists by military authority of the Commander-in-Chief and not as a lawful constitutional body. Evidence of this exists in the U.S. Titles and Codes. In the Index to t in, of Titles in Volume 1, one finds either a, a Title II, the Congress is marked with an asterisk, and the note at the bottom of the page will indicate that the Congress exists by resolution, not positive law. Lincoln issues the very first executive order without any authority to do so. Issuing an executive order is tyranny as it is an act of treason. So here we have Abraham Lincoln's executive order. This is right off of Wikipedia. And as you can see, executive order number one on February 14, 1862 was issued by Lincoln. The fact that Lincoln believed he could is issue an executive order is uh, tantamount to treason because, as we know, there's three branches of government we live under. The Congress passes laws, the Supreme Court rules on whether the laws are constitutional, and the executive uh, branch, the president, signs the laws into, um, so signs or vetoes whether the laws are going to be passed or not. But nobody has all three as, you know, a prerogative of theirs. Issuing an executive order is tyranny as it is an act of treason. The Constitution only allows Congress to make law, yet executive orders act as law, so the President is usurping Congress's power to make law. The U.S. Constitution is absolutely clear without any ambiguity whatsoever in the fact that only Congress has the exclusive right to enact all law. Article 1, Section 1, quote, All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. However, presidents have repeatedly acted and continue to act treasonously in usurping the right to enact law by issuing executive orders under the guise of national emergencies. However, the only authority the president has on extraordinary occasions of national emergencies is to call Congress into an emergency session, Article 2, Section 3. Any enactment of law by the executive branch in a, in a form such as an executive order is made in excessive jurisdiction and is by definition treason. Up until Abraham Lincoln, there were few, if any, orders for presidents that would classify as legislation. Following Lincoln's war against Southern independence that caused the deaths of more than 620,000 citizens, untold misery, and sunk the country to debt and control by bankers from which the nation has never recovered, there were an abundance of executive orders where the president assumed the fascist role of lawmaker. Executive order designations. Abraham Lincoln issued 1, 1A, and 2. Theodore Roosevelt, 1006. Boy, did he like to be king. So we just have to love these presidents that think that they should bypass the role of government <coughs> completely and act like king. The all-time winner, of course, Franklin Roosevelt, with 3,723.